Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to Grace and Holy Trinity's Noonday Prayer. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Our opening sentence is on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, or it can be found on your online bulletin. Today, we also observe the lesser feast of Margaret Ward, Margaret Clitheroe, and Anne Lyne, martyrs. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116, found on page 759 in the Book of Common Prayer. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low and he helped me. Turn against, turn again to your rest, O my soul. The Lord has treated you well, for you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress, I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O oh Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 3 through 13. When Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. As for yourselves, beware. For they will hand you over to councils and you will be beaten in synagogues. And you will stand before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say. But say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. 
brother will betray brother to death and father his child and children will raise against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Today, we reflect on the lives of Margaret Ward, Margaret Clitheroe, and Anne Lyne, martyrs. To their credit, our 16th century ancestors perceived a vital connection between politics, religion, and morality. To their shame, both Catholics and Protestants pursued the righteousness of Christ with the sword. Despite her passivic uh, disposition and refusal to make windows into men's souls, many Roman Catholics were persecuted as traitors by Anglican magistrates during the reign of Elizabeth I. Margaret Ward, Margaret Clitheroe, and Anne Lyne, along with the 40 martyrs of England and Wales, canonized by Paul VI in 1970, fell victim of this anti-Catholic violence. Though we rightly celebrate the flourishing of Anglicanism in the reign of Elizabeth, we must repent of zeal with knowledge, without knowledge, and unjust violence. Nothing is known of the early life of Margaret Ward, the Pearl of Tyburn. She helped a Roman Catholic priest, William, or Richard, Watson, to escape from Bridewell Prison, discovered, arrested, Ward was questioned, kept in irons for eight days, hanged by the wrist, and flogged. Nevertheless, she refused to disclose the whereabouts of Watson. Liberty was offered if she would worship at an Anglican service and besiege pardon of the queen. Refusing, Ward was executed by hanging on August 30th, 1588. Margaret Clitheroe, called the Pearl of York, converted to Roman Catholic faith. Her husband, whose brother was a Roman Catholic priest, remained in the Church of England. He paid the fines imposed for his wife's lack of attendance at church and allowed her to harbor priests in their home, an offense punishable by death. Discovered and arrested, Clitheroe refused to plea sparing her children from testifying against their mother. To induce a plea, weights were placed on a board until she was crushed. Clitheroe died on Good Friday, 1586, which coincided with the annunction that year. Hearing her cruel death, Elizabeth wrote the people of York to protest the execution of a woman. Anne Lyne and her brother were converts to the Roman faith, disinherited by their Puritan father. Born Alice, she took the name Anne after her conversion and was married to Roger Lyne, who was also a disinherited convert. After her husband's death, Anne was entrusted to keep a house of refuge for fugitive priests by the Jesuit missionary priest John Gerard. On Candlemas, 1601, during the blessing of the candles, her house was raided. At her trial, Lyne told the court she only regretted not being able to harbor a thousand more priests. She was executed by hanging on February 27th. We continue with the prayers found on page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who despises not a broken and contrite heart, and has promised to fill those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, we humbly beseech you, remember not the sins and offenses of our ancestors, but grant that, like your servants, Margaret Moore, Margaret Clitheroe, and Anne Lyne, we may sanctify you in our hearts and be always ready to answer for our faith with meekness and fear. Through our only mediator and advocate, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you your prayers of intersection and thanksgiving, either aloud or in the silence of your heart. We pray especially for those that are affected by gun violence, especially those in Jacksonville, Florida this past weekend. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. <laughs>